you, sir. I'm going live. Now we are live, sir. Please. Dear friends, good evening. As we know that my NEP campaign has been inaugurated on September 11, 2020. Under this campaign, competition will be held from September 25th to 2nd October 2020 on various themes in various categories like poster making, video, later to PM, quiz, meme, etc. This competition aims to increase the awareness about NEP among the students and masses. You can participate in the competitions in the two categories. A student of class 9 to 12 can participate uh, in one category. A student of division and above and parents and citizens can also participate in this competition. Even you can promote this campaign as an individual by becoming an ambassador or you can support this campaign as an institution by taking a pledge to encourage my NEP campaign in your institution. We are organizing talks and discussions by eminent personalities from the field of education through Facebook live sessions. In this chain, today we have with Dr. Yashi Sharma, Director of National Assessment and Accreditation Council, NAC. I would like to introduce you all to Dr. Yashi Sharma. Dr. Yashi Sharma is an educationist, researcher, and an administrator. His areas of specialization are structure mechanics, material engineering, and nanotechnology. Formerly, he was vice chancellor of Chhattisgarh Swami Vivekanand Technical University. Bilai. He was also vice chancellor of Tumkur University, Tumkur. He was also the chairman of Karnataka State Higher Education Council, Government of Karnataka. And he was principal of RV College of Engineering and Engineering Bangalore. Dr. Sarma is genuine concern for the downtrodden and the deprived classes of society is echoed in his special initiative undertaken by the university for the welfare of students belonging to weaker sections. Recognizing his service to the society and the health, in the health sector in particular, he has been nominated as a trustee BMC Niva's Hospital Trust, a public charitable and non-profit trust established for poor patients in the society. And his trust has 72 years of history. Dr. Rishi Sarma assumed charge as director NAC on 28 May 2018. He will enlighten us with his knowledge about assessments, assessment and accreditation and how NAC will, uh, is going to function under national education policy from, uh, you know, after kind of, after implementing uh, my NEP. Uh, I hope this session will enhance our knowledge and understanding about NEP and also it will uh, kind of give a lot of information of the participants who are participating under my NEP competition. Sir, my NEP campaign welcome you on this platform and please enlighten us and our participant. Thank you, sir. Namaskar, Namas Namaskar to all of you. Namaste. Uh, it is such a great pleasure to be with you in this virtual mode. Respected Dr. Ramananji and uh, Dr. Sanjeevji and, and my dearest students who are view viewing this brief lecture. In fact, uh, why NEP? What, what you, you have given a title as my NEP. Now the next question is why national policy on education? What is the reason? You see, when you trace your, when you trace the history, it is it is almost seventy four long years. But it is such a, a, a paradoxical thing that uh, we need to have new education policy for what? Is it student centric or is it teacher centric? And do you have the pleasure and joy? of going to the institution, colleges, etc. That is the most important thing for a student. But whereas in the 74 years, let me trace a little bit of earlier days. 1781, the, after the uh, war of Battle of Buxar, and uh, in order to, you know, chamfer and have a good relationship there, the British started the madrasa and now the same madrasa is is uh, called as Alia University in Calcutta, 
and whereas in 18 uh, 1813 the in the charter act missionary schools were introduced and all of us know in 1835 was a uh, was a paradigm shift that uh, lord macaulay um, wanted to change the oriental education to western education and after that you know you had series of uh, four or five uh, commissions british commissions the the whole objective of british was just to make uh, use of of the indian populace population for their ulterior benefit of becoming clerks or whatever it is and uh, and the there was a complete phase phase shift of our indian education or the oriental education to that of a western education in after independence 1948 we had wonderful uh, the first education commission was by uh, Saras Radhakrishnan and uh, Saras Radhakrishnan mentions universities as intellectual adventure, way of life, etc. So this is whereas the way of life of East India Company was cultural colonization, and here in Radhakrishnan's report it says that it is a way of life and it is intellectual adventure. A student should have an intellectual adventure by the uh, by the uh, know-how and knowledge of the teachers now dating back to 5th century or 6th century takshashila and nalanda what a wonderful concept takshashila had you see you when you when you study the kadambri of banabatta it says it also defines the liberal art what do you mean by liberal art and you can transmigrate from liberal art to applied science or science and medicine that is ayurveda etc you had we had the treasure of knowledge in bharat but ultimately and slowly the denudation started in 1600 when the east india company came and and uh, and the most vital thing was 1835 and macaulay wanted his his main prime intention was 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 to replace the oriental education to that of a western education now i was just discussing about saras radhakrishnan's report and slowly you see the genesis of higher education the fundamental thing is the truncation that is the basic of primary and secondary education and there came in 1956 somewhere around 1956 arkat lakshman swam Madaliar. he was a very very uh, distinguished gynecologist who was the vice chancellor of madras university for over for 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 for, for nearly two decades and after that you know uh, there was in 1965 such a wonderful uh, report kothari commission report was really wonderful he concentrated more on the teacher education and so many lapses that were before 1965, the whole thing was brought out. But unfortunately, the policy makers, then the policy makers after that, over a period of 74 long years, the only 30 or 40 percent of Qatari Commission was adopted, and the, the other thing trickled out. It did not come down to the uh, to, to the floor. But it is it is very unfortunate that the higher education. And, and even the school education, I'm not very competent to comment on the school education. Well, on higher education, I can very well say there was a skewed dislocation, absolute skewed dislocation. There was only pick and choose to suit the needs of the respective uh, policy makers. I, I would say policy makers. But eventually what happened? Did we did we at all? Did we at all get the benefits of uh, benefits of uh, uh, the education, higher education? Well, it's a question mark, and it is a, it's a de debatable thing. So now there is a dwan. What what is that dwan of higher education? Here it 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 says that you have you have options to take whatever subjects you wish to, and you have options to come out. And the first thing is. The whole thing, the Ministry of Human Resource Development is rechristined as Ministry of Education. That was the first step. And here in the national education policy, yes, well, in 1986, there was national uh, policy on uh, national education policy. 
and and after a period of 34 or 36 years now we have this national policy on education 2020 well there is a 360 transformation what is this 360 transformation in the trajectory of sustainable change in higher education this NEP national education policy is one such change on the cultural as well as uh, on, on the field of education. Now there has been a undergoing a rapid change in knowledge la landscape. There is a dramatic scientific and technological advances with the rays of big data, machine learning, artificial learning, and many unskilled jobs are slowly world over taken over by the, by, by the machines. And then what is it that, um, that uh, sustains this the, the you know while while need for a skilled workforce particularly involving mathematics computer science data science in conjunction with multidisciplinary abilities multidisciplinary abilities that which means social sciences and humanities will be increasingly in great demand this is one of the most important thing well, in, in the new education policies is, is divided into four sections. One is the school education higher and the other is key areas of focus. And the fourth one is how do we make it happen? This is the most important thing. Well, let me just touch the school education. The school education is divided into five plus three plus four. That is the preparatory first and second in the, in the, in the, in the, in the five and second, third, fourth and fifth sixth seventh eighth ninth tenth eleventh and four four five three three preparatory um, and uh, uh, the the basic preparatory uh, for, for preparatory and middle school and high school this is this is the general pattern and of course there it says that continuous professional development for teachers is essential and 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 uh, the main intention is um, we have all been seeing curbing commercialization of education which is which is a menace in this country which has taken place after independence and this has been slowly taken out since i being the director of nac i would like to concentrate more on accreditation and higher education why is this policy this policy is is very good well-rounded and creative individuals it, it makes and it it you know one or more specialized areas of interest at deeper level it says in the policy you know you have you need joy and you need opportunity also to all the citizens in this country and higher education must form the basis for knowledge creation and innovation this should lead to growth of national economy and this is very important and then further in the policy uh, the, there are key changes what are these key changes you know we have medical universities we have engineering universities we have sanskrit university music university all kinds of university but ultimately we are restricted we are like jet car horses with blinkers we go in this direction we don't even look uh, this side or that side therefore the concept of multidisciplinary university and colleges have have uh, been written in the policy and which is which is very very important for example if a student has to take up mechanical engineering uh, major and if, if if he is desirous of taking music as a minor he can do that here and uh, this is this is a wonderful thing and revamping of curriculum pedagogy assay, assessment etc will be done the most important thing in the policy is integrity of faculty well during my uh, you know interaction discussion I will, I will i will come back to this point integrity of faculty why this is important and then the national research foundation uh, the concept has been brought out whereas national science foundation in washington dc it gives money only for the science and technology and engineering and promotes research whereas here national research foundation funds outstanding peer-reviewed research and actively seed uh, research in universities and colleges and it also promotes the societal well-being the, the the whole document is democratic just socially conscious cultured and humane nation upholding its liberty equality 
fraternity and justice for all this is enshrined in the constitution equity accessibility accountability um, um you know these are these are some some of the most important things which are uh, correlated with liberty equity e equality fraternity and justice and uh, given the 21st century requirements it, it the only thing is it a creative individual well-rounded thoughtful and develop good ideas is most important which generates intellectual curiosity as stated by radha krishnan in his commission as intellectual advan uh, adventure intellectual curiosity scientific temper creativity and more than all spirit of service that, that's the most important thing Whereas higher education must form the basis and knowledge creation and innovation for the growth of the economy. And equally, you'll have to keep the socially advantaged uh, uh, lot and the section also. And why did this higher education, national education policy come? What is the reason? The obvious reason is there is, there is, there is no educational ecosystem. In fact, there is very less development of cognitive skills and learning outcomes. It is a very rigid separation of disciplines of narrow st narrow studies. This is this is this is the most important thing. And and another thing is socio-economically disadvantaged areas where uh, you know the where they cannot teach HEIs that teach in local languages and and there is a lot of confusion there. In fact, research at most universities and colleges and lack of peer reviewed uh, research funding and suboptimal governance that is most important and the biggest bane in higher education is um, there is a lot of affiliating systems and thousand colleges affiliated to one university 500 colleges 300 colleges whereas it lowers the standard of undergraduate education there is absolutely no joy and it and the policy goes on to state that the multidisciplinary universities and colleges will be set up in every district or nearing to that district this is the most important thing and it gives a lot of in, in institutional autonomy merit appointments and career progression and national research foundation and ultimately it states that light but tight you know you have the freedom regulation by a regu single regulator for higher education you give the freedom but when we cross the limit it becomes tight till then it is watchful so there's a beautiful concept tight and light and then you know we have the online education and open distance education to increase the gross enrollment ratio to increase access equity and inclusion through a range of measures that gives a greater greater opportunity then we have the institutional restructuring and consolidation what is this restructuring the cluster universities colleges four or five colleges come together as cluster university large multidisciplinary universities which transforms uh, transforms higher education into large multidisciplinary universities which is very important so you have student enrollments in thousands for optimal use of infrastructure and resources see this license raj is broken if you have large area good student strength and a lot of uh, faculty therefore you know residential facilities automatically uh, the uh, uh, it allows uh, the spectrum of institutions to take a lot of uh, student strength etc and the document says that uh, research intensive university teaching intensive university and autonomous colleges so the very word teaching intensive is you give prominence to teaching where the faculty strength is there and research of course they do uh, uh, whatever uh, research they can and teaching uh, research intensive university like indian institute of science they do a lot of research there or tata institute of social sciences or, or tata institute of fundamental research many many institutes like this so concentrating and what about the larger chunk the larger chunk will be autonomous degree granting colleges where uh, graded accreditation will be established i'll just talk about the accreditation little later 
um, so towards more holistic and uh, and disciplinary a multidisciplinary universities so you can establish research and innovation incubation centers technology development centers but you need to have some kind of a date isn't it cut off from 2040 higher education institutions shall aim to become multidisciplinary whereas in 2030 gradually increase student strength at desired level this is the mandate and uh, optimal learning environment and student uh, support for students this you know in so many universities we get the money but we cannot uh, utilize before march 31st there are a lot of problems the students are the ultimate sufferers because our clients are students so in the new education policy very nicely it has been delineated that institutional development plan idp here you record all the details whatever you are going to ask classroom transaction academic planning etc for the budget and institution development planning is very important and then internationalization of um, of uh, uh, of higher education you see people should look back to india as vishwa guru as the destination pro for providing premier education at affordable cost this is important I, I i was just mentioning about the cost financial support of the student it is it is very nicely written as from 25 percent to 100 percent financial uh, support is given to students of financial uh, inability who cannot have an access and then it also goes on mentioning about motivated energized and capable faculty compensations for person for permanent faculty at higher level will be given and a lot of uh, good things have been stated regarding the compensation and the main important uh, point heralding in the national education policies equity and inclusion you see the the, the, uh, the there is a coin uh, uh, word coin as socio economic disadvantaged group very very important and here special zones are there to monitor the gross enrollment ratio and and it it has an equilibrium i would use the term equilibrium for uh, gender balance admissions and and uh, you know uh, local indian languages or bilingual languages financial assistance to for socio economically uh, disadvantaged group etc and steps cost and fees for pursuing higher education this has been taken care in the report and financial assistance and scholarships are available and uh, most important thing for the differently able wheelchair accessibility and uh, for the for the differently able and bridge courses and the word socio-economical and academic support and mentoring is is mentioned here and uh, you know a lot of uh, things for the socio-economic disadvantage group we give with this and professional education it, it see the higher education integrates agriculture legal health teacher education this is very important and uh, um, of course uh, i just mentioned about uh, the national uh, research foundation which is a very important thing and then it's it emphasizes on teacher education you see uh, there is rampant uh misuse of of abuse and misuse of of uh, authority uh, for teacher education rampant corruption etc now the whole thing has been changed there's a phase shift of four years integrated course in teacher education because teachers education is fundamental and then reimagining the word is being used for vocational education and there is a transforming the regulatory system you have four verticals there uh, national regulatory authority national accreditation council and uh, general education council so there are four verticals and uh, it it again it mentions about light and tight most important thing at the undergraduate level you have either three years or four years three years you study as a regular thing four years is three years plus one year research then you can move on to the post graduation if you would have done four years as one year post graduation if it is three years then it is two years uh, it is wonderful you know you can you can you can go 
backward and forward, which means to say whenever you want, you can get inside. And there is a credit transfer also, like in the United States, uh, for uh, six credit hours or nine credit hours. If it is an A-grade institution, you, you migrate to another big, from Purdue to MIT when you go, uh, uh, the six credit hours being transferred. Same thing which, uh, with, with, uh, with, uh, with, with little magnanimity, I would use the word magnanimity, academic bank of credit. Uh, it, it is digitally stored. And if a student doesn't want to continue for various other reasons, personal or other reasons, he can come out and get inside the very next year itself through academic bank of credit that the transfers will be effected. And the most important thing is MPhil is completely you know, erased. And then you have the multidisciplinary education and research universities called as Meru. So here, a student who cannot get into IIT or IASC or TIS or uh, Tata Institute of Social Sciences or any other premier institution on the same basis, multidisciplinary -edu education and research universities are set up. This is very important. And more uh, emphasis is given, as I uh, just now mentioned, about teaching, research, etc. Why all these things? You know, at least there should be a gross enrollment ratio, 50% by 2030. Mind you and imagine, my dear students, from 47 till now, it is only 26.3% in 2018. But this is not a uh, thing to be appreciated at all. Because, you know, when you see uh, globally, the standards are low by all means anyway because i'm running out of time i, I there is the this itself uh, constitutes a bigger debate altogether so for that to increase that we have open distance learning and online which is on par with the general education and you know you have conflicting uh, and and divergent uh, connotations when uh, from outside affiliated university private university deemed university Dinova University, Unitary University, my God, a lot of things that all those things are demolished and it is replaced by a common term as university. And the part three, what is this focus about? It key areas of focuses on professional education, adult education, promotion of Indian languages. What a great treasure we have in Sanskrit. Pali and Prakrut and national centers should be set up on this. This is what is uh, indicated. Technology use and integration online, etc. And how do we make it happen? This is the most important thing. You see, like a karyakarta, all the teachers and students, when we align in a single uh, thought process, then I think it is possible to make it happen it is it is it is not only the teacher it is not only higher education institutions it is also my dearest uh, children students you are the you are the hope of this country and only when you accept with you see in the document it says joy and opportunity i'm sure when you enter the promised portals of higher education or university it should not be a drudgery and boredom there should be joy and that joy can happen only when you understand, assimilate and love the subject and love the degree on a parchment paper. If, if you have a PhD or a master's or an undergraduate and which is of no use, what is the, what, where is the point? We are, we are stuffed with more of theory and less of practical. It is, it is, it's absolutely we need in Bharat, we should we should have we should carve a new Bharat in the higher education scenario. Pandit Dindayal Upadhyayaji, he has in in his Ekatma Manavata Darshan, and 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 even even in uh, the speeches of Ashutosh Mukherjee or, uh, or Shama Prasad Mukherjee, somewhere in, in the Pandit Dindayal Upadhyayaji saying, "Vikti Nirman," he talks more about the economic aspect of it. He talks more about the nation building overall, general, but there, somewhere it is intertwined and interlinked with the higher education also. Therefore, this kind of an internal system should have a supporting of all diverse students, which cohorts, this is very, very important. It cohorts in academic and social domain 
both inside and outside formal academic interaction this is your vyakti nirman and and that is how it should happen therefore the thought process should be perfect well uh, this is about higher education let me now uh, i'm running short of time because 6:30 was the time given just i'll take five more minutes and you see in the accreditation it is it is given as national accreditation council and then this is a meta uh, uh, accrediting body under this you have different sections of accreditation agencies which this national accreditation council gives now here in accrediting what is this accreditation most important thing is we have the student survey uh, there is there as we get a lot of information through the portal to the students email ids the first thing is iaqa in institutional internal quality assurance that will be submitted and after that the self study reports are given and after that is the data verification and validation and during that time student satisfaction survey we get information from the students which constitute a major chunk here and then is the peer team visit and mind you from iaqa to the peer team visit everything is driven by ICT it uh, uh, completely driven by information communication and technology with with a beautiful larval framework uh, platform and and this is how it is working and once you get accredited and that is linked with autonomous college that is linked with uh, the rusa grants that is linked with uh, the autonomous college getting into the university and uh, uh you know uh, this the process is a wonderful process so uh in the ancient theory of education what was what where did the uh, accreditation you know in gurukula system the student when when the guru finds that the student is is almost well rounded with 360 degrees with all the uh, with all the uh, knowledge then the guru says he validates his knowledge uh, he validates his once the validation takes place then then it is called as accredited accredited is, is i am satisfied with with my with my uh, results so uh, the atma should get satisfied and buddhi should get satisfied ultimately what do we need we need value based education where is shanti satya dharma these are most important thing a righteous path when we lead and this is how it is synonymous to national education policy i am sure it takes a while to get into the field like a karyakarta all of us should work together in promoting uh, the higher education scenario in india it should change and india uh, bharat should become the vishva guru uh, throughout the world and we should be reminded of our pre independent pre 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 british time pre british time and we had treasure of knowledge and uh, you know the role of a guru is so important shankaracharya in guru ashtaka he says who is a guru uh, guru rangri padme manas chenna lagme he says tatakyam 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 who is that guru who is he the guru is one who has a profound Uh, knowledge within with all the 360 degrees skills with all the 64 vidyas it what is called as 64 vidyas whether it is liberal art science applied technology or technology or medicine whatever may be the case it should be a well rounded well rounded personality that guru can improve, can 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 change the the personality of a student and all of you have listened to this uh, brief lecture with uh, with 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 uh, great attention and the time allotted to me was just half an hour so i think i can i can close and namaskars to all of you i wish you all the best and i wish vidya bharati dr ramanand ji and sanjeev who gave me this opportunity thank you very very much namaste thank you dr sharma as a true educationalist you have only uh, you, uh, you have not only highlighted uh, kind of nitty-gritty of higher education but you have also highlighted the joy and opportunity part of the 
international education policy and it shows you how much you love your students uh, how much you are concerned about the kind of uh, job opportunity of your students uh, it was a wonderful session uh, i want to uh, uh, thank dr ashish sharma and i want to also make a uh, one announcement uh, for the participant tomorrow we have another a uh, very beautiful session and dr swarup rawal uh, educator and actress will deliver a very interesting session on role of creative and critical thinking in learning so as jaisa ki aap log jante hain we are uh, organizing a series of event series of discussion on the various aspects of national education policy to promote awareness about the various themes and uh, various concept of national education policy among uh, among the students among the parents among the teachers the aim to uh, organize this session to kind of to uh, to make uh, national education uh, national education policy more simple jaisa ki dr ashish sharma sir ne bahut hi simple version mein नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी को हमारे सामने प्रेजेंट किया एंड जो चाहे वो एक्रेडेशन का इश्यू हो चाहे वो टीचर एजुकेशन का इश्यू हो जो चाहे जो एग्जिस्टिंग सिस्टम के जो इश्यूज हैं उनको कैसे सिंप्लीफाई करके प्रेजेंट किया है क्योंकि बहुत सारे लोगों के पास ये टाइम नहीं होता है कि वो पूरे पॉलिसी डॉक्यूमेंट को एक साथ पढ़ करके समझ सके तो इस डिस्कशन का एक एम ये है कि आप ये अगर आप लेक्चर सुनेंगे तो आपको नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी का एक एस्पेक्ट समझ में आ जाएगा एंड यू कैन आल्सो पार्टिसिपेट इन द कंपटीशन यू कैन आल्सो पार्टिसिपेट यू कैन कंट्रीब्यूट इन द माय एनएपी कैंपेन सो आप माय एनएपी कैंपेन में जुड़ते समय इन वीडियोज को इन लाइव सेशन को जरूर सुनिए इट विल हेल्प यू टू काइंड ऑफ एनहेंस योर परफॉर्मेंस इट विल help you enhance your knowledge your understanding of about national education policy thanks from the my nep team uh, thanks dr ashish sharma sir thanks sanjeev ji thank you namaste thank you